Izzas on all levels. Look at the Khulafa back then, the leaders back then, even the oppressive leaders back then, in this month. In this month, al Mu'tasim in Amuriya, 223 years after the Hijrah, the, the, the empire, the Roman empire, you've seen a weakness that the Muslim had, where, where the Mu'tasim went to fight off, fend off uh, someone called Babak al-Kharmi. When he went to fight him off, the Romans seen a weakness, so they took a portion of the Muslim land. They invaded it, they killed the children, the elders, no mercy. They had no mercy and compassion on anyone, they didn't spare anyone. They took over 1,000 female Muslimat as slaves, concubines, and they slaughtered their kids before them. And then they took Muslim male prisoners, put iron rods in their eyes, and they cut their ears off and snatched their noses off. Then comes a shout from one of the Muslim Wa to the Mu'tasim. And uh, th she shouted for the Mu'tasim for help. On the spot, he went to her aid. What a mockery when you look at today. What a mockery, what foolishness. The Syrians being massacred like something that's going to go in history. One of the top catastrophes in history. The Syrians are massacred. The history is going to document it for two years. After Mufti Obama declares war and openly says now he's going to help them, now suddenly the shiuch pop up in Egypt and then elsewhere and everyone wants to talk about it and speak those big terminology. Where were you for two years before that? Where were you two years before that when they were getting slaughtered like sheep? What an ummah. What an ummah in their low thinking. They hail, those are heroes? And those are heroes after two years after they're given the green light? What a backward thinking ummah we have. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open their eyes so they can analyze things the proper way because there's no izzah. Those ulama are the heroes. They ask the Syrian man, uh, uh, what, what, what do you think about what Mufti Obama is doing, what the shiuch, you know, now they got the green light, now they're speaking, and, and now they're meeting and declaring and using the big term. He said, we never waited for them. We don't see the effect of that hair. And nothing of that is apparent to us here. They're two, two years late on that. When a woman called Wa Mu'tasima to that Khalifa, look at those leaders. He didn't sit and think and wait two years. He, history said, he jumped off his bed. And he said, everyone prepare. Uh, on the spot, history says that. One of the historians said that the woman who shouted Wa Mu'tasima was a descendant of Fatima radiallahu anha. Meaning a descendant of the Prophet ﷺ. When she called Wa Mu'tasima, she was being tortured. The king of the Romans said, mocking and laughing. You think Al Mu'tasim is going to come here on horses of Dalmatian to rescue you? Horses of Dalmatian were expensive and a special breed of horses. A rare, special breed of horses. He told his soldiers, Al Mu'tasim, go get me every Dalmatian horse you can get. They went and got him. More than 4,000 Dalmatian horses. He put them in the front of the army. When he got to near Amuria, he said, no one touched that woman but me. I'm going to the one be the one who rescue her. When he got to her and he freed her, he said, Ishhadi li inda jaddaki anni ataytu li khalasiki wa fi muqaddimat askari arba'at alaf ablaq. Testify, go tell your grandfather, go tell your grandfather, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I rescued you with 4,000 Dalmatian horses lead in the army. That, that's, that's the men. He then ordered, he then ordered that the one who be slapped her be executed. And then he torched Amuriya on the 20, 223 years after the Hijrah in Ramadan. Sometimes part of Izza, one might have to say a word that's going to cost him his life or put him in prison. For Islam, it's worth it. The, the Prophet said it. The best of all martyrs is Hamza. But who else? We can be like Hamza. You want to be like Hamza? Oh, tell us, O oh Prophet. And a man who stands up in the face of an oppressive leader, enjoins the good, forbid the evil, and is killed by him. Al-Hakim. Mustadrak al-Hakim. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, among the most dutiful people to his parents. Look at his Izzah. This is what we want to establish. Izzah, even when we're weak. His mother... Told him, you choose a religion other than your fathers and forefathers? What's this religion? Well, I'm not going to eat or drink or sit in the shade until I die or you change your religion. And I'm going to die, then you're going to die in agony because you let me die. He tried to convince her, it's very dutiful. The example of du being dutiful to his mom. When he seen it wasn't working, the izzah comes out. Mom, sit down, we got to talk. The izzah. 
You know how much I love you. You know how everybody talks about my love to you. And how I am dutiful to you. Wallah, if you had 100 souls, one after the other left out of you. And the only way to save them would be for me to leave this religion. I'm not going to leave it. Eat and drink and go in the shade. The women set examples of Izzah for the men of today to follow. Um Habiba, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, before Abu Sufyan became Muslim, he went to Medina to negotiate some matters with the Prophet Sallallahu So he goes to the wife, to the house of his daughter, who is the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She quickly, his daughter, she quickly folds the mattress of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He couldn't believe what he's seeing. What's going on here? He tells the daughter, I too good for that mattress or that mattress too good for me? He couldn't believe his eyes. He thought maybe she was too ashamed to have him sit on such a mattress. It's beyond his level, his stature is above that. She said, no, you're not worthy of sitting on a mattress of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're a mushrik nijis. He said, you've gone crazy after me, daughter. No, she didn't go crazy. Pride and Izzah in Islam. There's an agenda by those sellout figures we have to strip Muslims of pride and Izzah in their religion. Some people say it, others don't. You don't do Salah only. You do Salah and you spice it with Izzah, with pride. You do your hijab, you do your niqab, your beard with Izzah in it. You teach Islam with Izzah. Especially us here in the West. Show your pride in this religion. Because if you don't, Allah will replace you with those who will show pride in their religion. The Ummah's weak. Come on, Sheikh, man. All these talks you've been telling us, Khilafah and there's Khilafah. The Ummah now is weak, it's different. Still, you can show your Izzah. Let me give you some examples. Someone will say that's when the Khilafah was and there's some Muslims who respect it. You could be weak and still show your Izzah. You could be a prisoner and still show your Izzah. You could be under torture and duress and still show your Izzah. Everyone knows the story of Bilal. What about Khubayb when they took him as a prisoner? Khubayb ibn Adi and they were going to crucify him. He said, let me pray two rak'ahs. He got up to pray two rak'ahs. Even in those two rak'ahs he showed the Izzah. He prayed and he hastened in them so they, so they won't think that he fears death. They asked him, wouldn't you rather be at your home with your wife and children in the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be here instead of you? He said, Izza. He said, I'd rather be where I'm at here rather than know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got a little thorn in the tip of his finger. Rather be where, Khubayb, please explain. Khubayb, Khubayb, explain to this defeated, surrenders ummah, where would you rather be? Elaborate, elaborate, explain to us. Where would you rather be? He'd rather be crucified. He'd rather his flesh be shredded rather than know, know that the Prophet got a little thorn in the tip of his finger. Izza. Then they began to hail his blessed body with spears and arrows as he says, إِلَى اللَّهِ أَشْكُوا غُرْبَتِي ثُمَّ كُرْبَتِي وَمَا أَرْصَدَ الْأَحْزَابُ لِي مِنْ عِنْدَ مَصْرَعِي Oh Allah, I complain to you the hardship I face. And that which the coalition have conspired to do to me. Oh Allah, the Lord of the throne, grant me patience in that which they plan to do to me. Oh Allah, I despair in everyone except you. وَذَٰلِكَ فِي ذَاتِ الْإِلَٰهِ وَإِنْ يَشَأْ يُبَارِكْ عَلَىٰ أَشْلَاءِ شِلْوٍ مُمَزَّعِي All that is for the sake of Allah. And if He wills, He will bless the shredded pieces of my flesh. وَقَدْ خَيَّرُونِ الْكُفْرَ وَالْمَوْتُ دُونَهُ عِزَّةً وَقَدْ خَيَّرُونِ الْكُفْرَ وَالْمَوْتُ دُونَهُ وَقَدْ هَمُلَتْ عَيْنَايَ مِنْ غَيْرِ مَجْزَعِي They gave me the choice of kufr. I rather take death over that. I'd rather take death over that. Meaning, and then he said, I, 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 my eyes tear. But he was trying to explain, they didn't tear out of fear from them, but out of fear from you. He goes on to elaborate. I fear not death. I fear death? Nah. I fear hello Allah. I fear you, O Allah. 
He's crying and weeping out of fear from Allah. And he's dying for the sake of Allah and getting shredded for the sake of Allah. What are we going to say? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إن لله وإن إلى رجعون فلست أبالي حين أقتل مسلما على أي جنب كان في الله مصرعي Look at the عزه I don't care what side I die on as long as I die a Muslim. وَلَسْتُ بِمُبْدٍ لِلْعَدُوِّ تَخَشُّعًا وَلَا جَزِعًا إِنَّا إِنِّي إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعِ I'm not going to show to my enemies humbleness or humility. I'm going to show it to Allah, the one I'm going to return to. Ultimate, eloquent meanings of Izza. Izza is no compromise even at weak points. Abu Bakr was at one as... At his weakest point, yes. When the whole Arabian Peninsula turned against him, he stood up firm. One man, he said, if you don't help me, I'm going to go to them by myself. Ibn Mas'ud, in times like ours, times where people were terrified and scared, weak point of the ummah, one of the weakest points during the Prophet ﷺ's time, he says, I'm going to go shout to them the verses of the Quran. They said, they're going to hit you. He said, Allah is going to protect me. What made him go out to say out loud? Is it a wajib? No. It's the pride, the izza. He went out. Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Quran. People said, what's going on with him? Ibn Umm Ma'bad. By the Kaaba shouting, they run up to him. They beat him. He goes louder. They beat him. He bleeds. He goes unconscious. They wake him up. His companions come to him, wake him up. He says, I want to go at it again. They stopped him. They refused to let him. Why did he do that? There's no wajib in the Quran. There's no ordain. It's not a sunnah. He did it because of his izzah. To show his izzah. When Khalid re reached Hiraqil, when he, uh, Khalid he reached Hiraqil, they were amazed. They were amazed at the pride and the advancing of the Muslim. So Hiraqil asked his people, what's going on here? Is there people more? He said, no. Is there weapon more advanced? No. He said, what's going on? An old man stood, said, let me speak. He spoke. He said, these are people who don't drink. Izza, we drink. These are people who don't commit adultery. We commit adultery. Izza, these are people who pray the night. And we don't pray the night. These are people who fast the day, we don't fast the day. Hiraqil said, indeed, that's how victory is achieved. Izza is not about scaring and terrorizing people. No. Izza is heba, prestige, prestige and status. We need to revive that in our hearts. Sultan Abdul Hamid, the second leader, 1876, in the Western calendar, 137 years ago. This was a young 34-year-old man. He could have had whatever he wanted. They offered him whatever gold and wealth he wanted to give up a little portion of Palestine to live in. He had problems in Balkan, problems with the Russian, pressure from all over. He said to Herzl, Dr. Herzl, don't try it. I won't give a hand span of the land of Palestine. It's not owned by me, it's owned by the Islamic Ummah, the Ummah that irrigated that land with their bloods. Save your millions. The only way you get it is that if the Khilafah goes down, then you can take it for free. While I'm alive, I'd rather for a knife to shred my flesh piece by piece than to give a hand span of the land of the Muslims away. They tried many times to assassinate him for that word, for that stand. Wallahi, a knife shredding me alive is easier for me shredding my flesh piece by piece than to give a little span, hand span of Palestine away. Izza, walillahi al-Izza, wali rasulihi wali al-mu'mineen, show your pride. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, don't do haram. Don't do haram and show your pride in it. Do, do the ordain and put your pride in it. Do the sunnah and have pride in it. Do the wajib with pride in it. Have pride when asked about Islam. When asked about teachings of Islam, don't be shy and embarrassed. When uh, it's time for salah, jump up to it wherever you're at. And nobody, it's not illegal. Jump up to it with pride and dignity and glory. When you learn your history, your bright, brilliant young brothers, learn this bright white history so you can defend this history with pride. When they talk about it, show your pride in the laws of Islam, the laws of the Creator. Show them how good they are and how unworthy and how they prove it to be a failure. Their laws were. While the laws of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, were the laws of the Creator, the only laws suitable for mankind. Show your pride in that. Jazakumullahu khair wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.